Let us together welcome Ram Varun Ramamurthy to talk to us about framing hypothesis, some art and much science. Varun founded Hansel.io, a venture-backed SaaS startup acquired by Netcore in 2020. He is currently the group vice president and business head at Netcore Cloud. Prior to Hansel, Varun has helped build products for leading brands like Flipkart and Zynga. The stage is all yours, Varun. I'm not going to take any more time. Uh, thanks, Akanksha. Uh, can you hear me? Is this clear? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and uh, let me know if you can see my screen. Okay, cool. So it's fine. Okay, so uh, it was a great uh, presentation by Anurban. Uh, interestingly, Anurban and I sort of uh, worked at Zynga a decade ago. Uh, and one of the examples that he used uh, is Yobel, which was a game that I used to run. And I have some examples from there as well. Um, the topic I'm, uh, you know, at hand today is, uh, you know, framing a hypothesis, right? Um, it's a, it's a topic that's close to my heart because um, hypothesis is something that we tend to use a little loosely. Um, you know, um, we have an idea and we say, hey, here's a hypothesis uh, uh, for this idea. Uh, we say, hey, well, my hypothesis is if we do this, then uh, you know, this will be good. Uh, sometimes we use it for uh, something like a prediction when we say, hey, my hypothesis is that uh, this metric is going to go up. Um, so so um, we kind of like tend to use this loosely. So, I mean, over the next 20, 25 minutes, I'm going to just talk about how to actually effectively frame a you know, hypothesis. I'm going to give you a framework to think about it. I'm going to take you through a few examples from my career as well. Um, so let's get started. Now, if you look at a scientific journal, um, and if you look at the definition of a hypothesis, uh, it, it, it basically states, hey, it's an idea uh, that proposes a tentative, tentative explanation um, about a phenomenon observed in the natural world, and so on and so forth. Right? Let's try to like break this down and sort of keep it simpler so we all can understand. Um, from a product management standpoint, um, a hypothesis is nothing but an idea on something that is observed and which has not been proven yet. right? The three things that we need to take away are it's an idea, uh, it's been something that's based on something that's being observed, um, and it's not proven yet. Idea, observed, not proven yet, right? Um, this is pretty much how we start with uh, creating a valid hypothesis. You observe a few things. Uh, based on those observations, you come up with a few ideas. And from those ideas, you will weed out all those ideas that cannot be a hypothesis. And from there on, you will frame the hypothesis. And of course, the rest of the process is testing and so on and so forth, which we can cover, uh, you know, probably later. Um, I'm actually going to take you through this process of framing uh, a hypothesis uh, with a couple of examples: uh, one from my Zynga days, um, one from my startup days, uh, and how I sort of like use, uh, you know, some of these uh, frameworks myself. Um, of course, uh, let's do a little bit of uh, back to the future uh, predestination. Let's roll our uh, clock back to 2012. I was one of the product managers at Google, uh, a self-expression game that Anurban talked about. Um, and, and um, you know, and, and, and let's, let's talk about the first step in this process, right? Which is observation. Observations are nothing but what you observe. Uh, through, and it could be not just with internal data, right? And, and more often than not, we think observations can come only from your analytics provider or so on and so forth, but it could come from anywhere, right? Um, of course, analytics is a rich source of observations, but it could be your customer tickets, it could be reviews, it could be surveys. Um, what is really interesting is it could actually also come from external data, right? Um, what if a competitor has launched something that with, with a little bit of interesting uh, numbers also added to the PR that gives you an observation, right? Um, you could have proxies. And, and one of the examples that I love to take, uh, you know, while talking about proxies is, um, let's say you're designing a game economy. And one of the proxies that you might want to look at is, uh, you know, how, does, how did the US function after the massive liquidity that Fed pumped in, right? 
now you could actually figure out when I mean, use that as a proxy for you i mean figuring out your game economy game economy as well um now or it could be trends right there could be new innovation like i mean um, apple when it came out um, with its iphone touch was a new behavior so consumers started looking forward to that new behavior so that's an observation as well right so now these are all various places from where you start uh, collecting uh, what we call as data what we call as observations that's actually the most important step uh, for formulating a hypothesis um so 2012 zynga uh, yovel as i said is a game of self expression um, players sort of dress themselves up uh, or dress their avatars up address their houses up they invite other players and they have actual conversations um now what we observed uh, in 2012 uh, were a bunch of things right uh, what you see in that box is uh, something that we observed through internal data and what you see outside of the box was something that was observed outside of uh, zynga now the thing was repeat purchases were actually going up meaning that people were buying their second third fourth fifth item uh, and there was also kind of like a predictable frequency with which they buy right uh every two weeks was when they bought their second third fourth right now um if you actually further drill it down uh, what you would observe is that uh there was actually an 80 20 split on the type of purchase so you will actually had two types of virtual goods one was a clothing uh, a good and the other one was furniture uh, people who used to buy furniture sort of never bought uh, clothing and vice versa right it was an 80 20 split so 80% of the players bought only one of those items now the other thing that we were also seeing was our average revenue per paying user was actually going up right it's, it's great or so we thought uh, but then we realized that actually you know what the number of repeat buyers were decreasing so the denominator was decreasing and our arpu was arppu was actually going up now al- you know al- along with all of this there was constant clamor on the forum uh, with you know players saying hey i want cheaper goods and so on and so forth now what we had observed uh internally was also something that steam had observed uh externally right and word on the market was steam in in back in 2011 2012 were testing a type of recurring purchase uh uh program for one of its games uh which had a very similar sort of loyal uh customer base right um and we also had some other proxies with respect to some other game trying this out so we had a bunch of these proxies we had external data of team trying something out and we had all this internal data and these are all the observations we had and of course uh, we just didn't do a ryan and said hey that's a great observation and we didn't move on we actually went ahead and we started with the next step in that process which is ideation right you have your observations ideas are nothing but uh, it's basically uh, let's let's you know think of them as educated guesses right an idea is not equal to a hypothesis right uh, why and we'll talk about why it can't be and why some of those ideas are never hypo- a hypothesis it's just an idea uh, but an idea is not equal to hypothesis it's just an idea and generally ideas start with questions right like how do i do this you know this is the observation what do i do uh, what can i affect are kind of like some of the ways with which you start uh, and then you kind of like have the ideation uh, process going um so we went into this entire sort of um huddle and we had the entire observation set in front of us uh, now it was time for for some ideas right 2012 zynga yovel um remember our ar cpu was actually going down our average revenue per paying user was uh, sorry was going up but our paying users were going down. and we had a bunch of other observations so here were five ideas that we brought to the table right one was product bundling hey what if we bundle a few products together and sell it at a certain price point um what if we actually increase the content drops instead of like dropping content every two weeks what if we do it one week every one week right um now another idea was hey what if we actually start for clothing buyers why don't we give something for furniture uh, and for furniture buyers why don't we give something uh, on clothing for free and so on so forth right and one of the other ideas was how do we do what, what about a subscription driven payment where they just pay for subscriptions and then everything else is up for sale uh, you know up for picks right uh um, the last thing that we actually said was hey you know what it could actually be a regular sort of a a, a cycle a game cycle right it could be i mean maybe the status quo i mean most of the games generally have a very sharp rise uh, in user base uh, with a very steep slope and then they start coming down uh, but the slope of the downward trajectory is not as fast as it is in the upward and generally in most of the good good games there is obviously that's because payers are there and payers are more retained and so on so forth and they'll they'll eventually come down 
and one of the things was hey let's do nothing because you know anyway this is how, this is the nature of the game let's do nothing it just just how games are right so i mean a quick question for all of you guys to ponder over later is how do we know if all all ideas you know have been generated that's something we can uh think about uh but once you have these ideas you go into the next process which is essentially weeding right you have to weed out ideas that are not hypothesis um simple three things right an idea has to be specifically impacting a metric if you do something it has to have a specific measurable black and white metric right it has to be testable in the sense you can run a test and you can figure out the validity of that idea right and the third one which is slightly a tricky concept to sort of get through is and important to also apply is falsifiability right how do you know that this particular idea can be disproved right falsifiability is what you say when uh, you know what do you get when like here's an idea if that idea can be disproved um, just as it can be proved it's essentially a falsifiable idea let me give you an example right now you might have one of those ideas that come in and say hey look i'm going to like revamp my home page and it's going to impact uh, my conversion wow good idea right uh, is it specific yeah conversion you can call it specific right is it testable yeah of course you can call it testable of course home page conversions you can test it. Uh, but is it falsifiable it is not right now the reason is because you're just saying hey home page is going to impact conversions of course it is going to you can never disprove that statement right you can never prove it wrong right you're going to prove it right because it's going to like impact something uh, which is where it's very important to convert your or, or to think about falsifiability in most of your ideas right and here's a couple of interesting uh, thought experiments um one of the things that uh, we all tend to take it as granted is survival of the fittest but it's not exactly falsifiable because you can't really go and look at all organisms and say hey this i mean all of these organisms that exist today are actually the fittest to have survived uh, maybe maybe not right uh, an interesting sort of controversial thought experiment that came in about 50 years ago was this whole thing called russell's peep uh, burton russell sort of it was it is it is, it is and it, it was a little controversial even then was essentially trying to give out this thought experiment where it was like why don't you assume or why don't you think that there is a miniature teapot that's circling the sun right it's so small that a telescope cannot uh, look at it now this is an idea that is false that is not falsifiable right because you can never disprove this in the 1950s of course there were no space space probes and stuff so you can never disprove this statement so the burden of proof um, sort of uh, was not there right like uh, basically were not able to disprove this and hence was used as a good thought experiment uh, on falsifiability now essentially where you want to get to uh, is not this right this is this is a very very important interesting quote by polly um, that your hypothesis is not only not right it is not even wrong is like this is the place where you do not want to end up it's the place of charlatan right it's somebody who says okay i am predicting that you know you're going to have a great day today Uh, all you know whatever right it's it basically where you don't even you can't even prove it right you can't prove it wrong so that's the place you don't want to be in um so with that what did we do in 2012 uh, again important to understand our ar ppo was increasing net payers were decreasing um ex- every idea except the fifth one was testable was falsifiable as well right so we basically narrowed it down to these four ideas um now from this we started generating or framing the hypothesis for the four ideas that remain and i'm going to take again one of these examples which is this one and i'm going to take you through this process of finally formulating a hypothesis that you can test so it's time right so let's start um if there is one takeaway for sort of i mean for all of you guys to sort of uh, take away from this uh, presentation it's this framework called mia uh, which is what an ideal hypothesis in the product world should contain right modification impact audience modification is what is the new um, what is the new experience what's the change what's the new product it could be anything what what is the new that you're bringing in what is the probable impact that this new is going to bring in right now this is where this is i'm going to take some time in the next few slides to talk about this because this is something that we sort of tend to uh, ignore but this is equally if not the most important thing in the entire hypothesis statement 
what is expected impact a specific measurable met, uh, metric and who are you subjecting this change to right like what is the sample population uh, that will be subjected to this mo modification so m i a what did we do 2012 zinga our hypothesis looked something like this we said introducing a recurring subscription payment model which is the modification will increase the arppu by 5% and increase retained payers by 1% which is the impact in the overall paying population which is the audience right now the question that all of us will have naturally is how did you arrive at this 5% and 1% without actually doing a test this is actually the most important and crucial part um, and it's always important uh, to not uh, resort to a shortcut one of the shortcuts that we tend to resort to and i resort to as well and i kind of like tell myself not to is where we basically say hey uh, let's have a non negative impact as long as it's positive it's fine right we that's just a shortcut it's suboptimal the most rigorous product teams in the world including the ones i worked at at zynga um, used to have this as a very important uh, byline in a in a in a hypothesis statement it's very important that you understand the impact now why right now it's probable impact right you have not started the test yet it's probable impact so why the first thing obviously draws the line and sets the benchmark right you can pretty much say the hypothesis is true or false depending on where the result falls on the line right is it up is the side of the line or that side of the line now the most important thing is it removes biases um uh, for instance you might see a 2% open rate um in email campaigns because of a landing uh, i mean because of a copy change now how much is good enough right is 2% good is 5% good is 10% good so somebody can come in tomorrow and say hey 2% is not good so you don't want your hypothesis to be just a hanging statement you want to conclude on it right um and couple of the most important things you would need this is it removes opportunity cost right for every hypothesis you are testing you are probably not testing three or four other hypotheses um right and which is also how we arrived at the fact that we had to test the subscription hypothesis more than the mere product bundling because we did a very rigorous impact analysis much before sort of like putting uh, uh you know putting lines of code um some of the ways you can do that some of the ways you can go about it is as simpler stuff right is not these are not like rocket science um simple stuff surveys i mean you can run your marketing team can run surveys Uh, you can actually have announcements on your on your landing page for a few users saying hey you're doing this would you be interested um you can of course look at proxies uh you can do some projections what we did at uh, yovel uh, when we launched this feature uh, was we did something called as a click test um uh, we actually mimicked a real subscription flow um meaning that there was a three there was a three step process we said hey here's a subscription program that we are bringing in to the most loyal customers um you know this is the next step in that when they click was hey this these are the three different tiers you can choose which one of these tiers you want to go go about like there was a clothing tier furniture tier and a bundle a bundle tier and then the last step was um, you know pay and the moment they hit pay you basically say hey your uh, i mean um, your uh, request has been recorded and we'll be adding to your subscription uh, list very soon now what we did was we it wasn't really a subscription thing it was just a click test and we are, we figured out the drop off points at each stage and we also figured out how many of these payers ended up clicking on the yes i want to be uh, yes i want to pay right which is basically pay now but um now this is a little sort of intense uh, way to measure impact uh, so this is not something you would want to do often but when there are extremely big changes you would want to be sure about the impact that uh, it brings in so we had to go through uh, one of these methods uh, but essentially think of all of these as ways for you to figure out the probable impact of your hypothesis right if you can if you don't even have a probable impact then what are you testing and why are you using your dev bandwidth which is already in shock right so this is how we sort of arrived at the hypothesis right um, of subscription giving a 5% jump on arpp so what actually happened um, thankfully this did not happen um what actually happened was we tested the hypothesis for two months and we discovered that the hypothesis was proven right the actual increase in the arpp was 12% on the baseline and the net payer retention was 2.4% on top of the baseline right um 
so this was one of those good scenarios uh, for every good scenario of course there are multiple examples of uh, hypothesis that did not work out uh, again it's not good it's not bad uh, this is why hypothesis is probably the most foundational sort of uh, bedrock of good product management right you're just trying to figure out if what you are thinking is right or not um the other point to ponder about is this is not something just just that just stops or starts and stops with features in a product right you can kind of like take it to different levels and i've been trying to take it to different levels um, even in my decision making as uh, i go through my career um, one of the interesting places where i try to inculcate this was when i was running my own startup um, where we had a little bit of a pivot that we had to do uh, so i kind of like moved the clock forward to 2019 now this was hansel and um, we at that point in time in 2019 uh, we were we were this very extensive ab testing framework which was built on top of variables so um, you know you use this framework um, you can convert all of your static code into variables and you can manage those variables as pm at run time now there were a couple of major uh, uh, users there were a lot of like really small users and like two or three really big uh, heavy duty users right the observations that we had at that point in time was most of them were actually trying to control their onboarding and adoption experience right uh it was heavy use case there right and and of course the external um observation was no code was still the rage and it is still the rage it will continue to be the rage going forward so then we came up with a bunch of ideas and we weeded them out and finally we we landed on one particular thing that could become a hypothesis which is what if we actually give these onboarding and adoption uh experiences kind of prepackaged into the template uh let the developer not even set it up for the pm let the pm just get it out of box right um so that was the idea we had and we went about sort of figuring out the impact uh for this through a bunch of customer conversation uh both existing and prospective customers um right and what we then uh figured out as a uh hypothesis for us to go after was hey you know what if we give uh pm this ability to modify ux um you know without um, without code it would actually cut down our sales cycle by two months the two months was the impact we are trying to figure out and then we went on this exercise um so 2019 2020 up until covid was like it was the hypothesis was being tested uh, there was a little bit of a pause but now it what, what we are figuring out is one of the most important tools from a product managers sort of arsenal right um closing thoughts i think uh, um, i have just about 10 minutes more so closing thoughts um one of the things that you would want to think about um while designing your hypothesis is all the constraints around it um for instance what about cannibalization right like for instance if i i mean going again back to the yovel days um when i had to do the subscription use case um uh would it cannibalize my other revenue right like there are other revenues running so cannibalization or something what about timing is this the right time to sort of run this uh, uh hypothesis um right so all of these are things that you'll have to think about um but uh, a very important point uh, to always think through when you are testing a hypothesis is the exit strategy um always have a fail safe right what if this fails right um especially when it comes to like larger changes um keep it timed uh because what you don't want to do is you don't want to like say something and then you figure out that your hypothesis is not work and you sort of like you're not fulfilling the promise that you set out to your customers that's something that you might not want to do so always have an exit strategy um uh, in your head in case the hypothesis fails um of course none of this is possible without having the relevant org culture right like an org culture built around hypothesis and uh, experimentation is something that um that uh it's super critical for this to be a successful sort of listing and um and try not to sort of um uh, get into that uh, you know the shortcut of hey we'll you know we'll release this and it just has to be non negative that's probably not the best way to do stuff and the next time somebody says hey build this feature for me um you might want to basically sit back and ask hey tell me what are the observations you've had uh it's uh it's it's an interesting topic uh because you know um uh, sometimes it's it's like you end up doing something because someone asked you to uh and you would want to like figure out uh why 
right maybe there was already a why package you just want to like ask the question like hey tell me what you have observed uh for you to suggest this change so those are some of the closing thoughts um, especially in an org culture right like um, there's a shout out to one of our customers mpl and and the reason why i'm i'm talking about this is um, mpl has been our customer since they started right it was 2018 uh since the very beginning uh, when they started uh they've been one of our customers and and the reason why i'm talking about mpl specifically here is that it it, it is amazing the, the kind of hypothesis and testing that goes on at mpl at scale and you if you have friends at mpl you'll have to talk to them about um how that is done um right like right from the get go right from the release right from the first set of few releases alpha beta because one of the things that we tend to do is hey you know what this is something that's for uh you know that's for at scale kind of um companies right it's probably not it might actually work out really well uh, and it's a discipline that you will have to sort of inculcate uh, across your org culture right uh, so that's pretty much what i have uh, i think i have about 5 minutes uh, i'm sure all of you guys are waiting for nirayal's uh, uh, presentation and talk so um, i'll not take too much time but if there are questions i'll just see if there are questions that i can answer um, happy to answer Sure, we're not letting you go that soon, Varun. There are few questions. It was definitely a great session, and hence we have a couple of them. Uh, first question that has popped up is, and you know, I know you just spoke about the exit strategy, how the failures, you know, how to actually handle that. Now, if there is some additional note for someone who's just starting up, because again, experimentation is not something that is. only relevant to a particular stage uh testing becomes critical at every stage so do you think there could be any major roadblocks for the you know newbies in the market um okay let let me try to like paraphrase this question so that i i mean i know i'm understanding this right like um so your question essentially is um, what are some of uh, i mean or actually can you can you just repeat this question so i'll just try to sure definitely So the question is: Is there some additional note for someone who's starting up? Uh, testing is critical at every stage, and uh, if we look at this, can there be a possible roadblock for somebody who's just starting uh, in the process? Of- God, God, hey! So definitely one of the roadblocks is the availability of data, right? Like, uh, uh, now, uh, I mean, there's, I mean, for every good recommendation, there's always something that uh, sort of you'll have to think through from your uh, perspective. um obviously one of the roadblocks is what if you don't have enough data right what will you, what are you testing on so testing as a methodology suggested always for companies that have reliable uh data coming in right that's probably one, the only major roadblock so if you have enough data and you actually have a culture of data then testing is just a is just a logical extension um uh, right got it got it and i think uh and the next question is somewhere around those again from the confused minds but how do you prioritize right uh, the opportunity cost or the timeline or the impact is there a, a way to it how have you prioritized it you know if you could throw some light on that one as well um yeah it's actually a nuanced sort of question right uh, there are uh, a lot of variables and of course prioritization is a separate topic that we can go on in, in detail and at length about um but if you look at it it's essentially a question of um, i mean it is a question of opportunity cost right it, it's a question of opportunity cost and and, and timeline and, and often times they're not we sort of when we give these answers we sort of ignore the organizational uh, uh, timeline as well in terms of what is the org sort of trying to move right now right so it's not just a blanket hey this is my opportunity cost uh, and this is the timeline and hence i'll pick this but it's also it also is a lot dependent on what your organization is trying to prioritize at any given point in time so it's a little more nuanced um, maybe we can do a separate session on this um, definitely, definitely. Uh, a little later right I, yeah. yeah definitely or we can do that as well just one last question uh, can you help us understand more about falsible i mean if, with some examples of falsible yeah um, actually that is one of the tricky topics right like like i said falsifiability is essentially you have a hypothesis uh but it can never be proven uh wrong right you can never disprove it um that essentially is what is falsifiability like or it is not falsifiability right and one of the examples that i used was um again i'm going back to the example because it's sort of like in the product management space the example that i used was you have a home page and somebody comes in and says you modify your home page 
and you're going to see an impact now that is something that you cannot falsify right no amount of i mean obviously it's going to i mean it's going to have an impact right now that is a statement you can't falsify and which means that is something that you can test right of course whether there's going to be an impact or not is something that's testable but what is i mean it is going to have an impact to something that is not falsifiable right it is going to be true anyway um right so that's pretty much the example uh, that i had and i want to reiterate that because this is a concept that's sort of like a uh, little tricky to get right but um just just think about this one point right like you have a statement and will the test that you are going to run the statement or hypothesis on will it be enough to disprove the statement not just this not just so can this be disproved by the test you are running that's it right you are so never go into i mean i mean obviously we try to sort of frame hypothesis such that you know we 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 tend to win right the concept is not about winning the concept is about proving or disproving your hypothesis right um winning is actually i would say just the very fact that you have a hypothesis and you're testing itself with a winning mentality um and the very fact that you can disprove it makes it a falsifiable hypothesis that's pretty much what it is and i think what i think that you've already answered but i'm just going to run by this last question by you is i think you answered it in this bit as well what is the best way to validate the idea and i i know you already like somewhere mentioned it that if you think this is you know very to just up to but anything more you want to add on that uh which means i mean these are these are again you're not validating an idea right that's pretty much the last 20 minutes you're validating a hypothesis right um you have ideas and you convert some of those ideas into a hypothesis and you're trying to validate them um i mean it's it's a cliched answer but it's probably the answer that we all have been fed and we've all built and we've all worked in which is which is ab test um but of course there are a lot of pitfalls in ab testing which we can cover probably later but um at least having that sense of experimentation and ab testing built in the organization is, is one of the is one way you can validate most of your hypothesis um uh and and this is something obviously i mean i picked it up personally uh from zinga right it, i mean um uh, you know working with folks like anand ban for instance we 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 all had a sense of experimentation inculcated it right from the beginning right like i'm talking about uh 10 years 11 years ago when experimentation was not even a thing uh right it was i would say that's probably the uh, best way to sort of validate some of the hypothesis you have don't validate an idea validate the hypothesis that's pretty much what i would say got it got it so that shift with that idea to hypothesis i think i'm going to sum it up here because varun otherwise we'll have to have one day <laughs> i sign just for the questions coming in but to all the audience our attendees please don't worry we'll make sure all your questions get answered in the you know compatible format post the sessions if there are any more questions coming up please hit them us uh, hit those with us and we will going to answer those as well but thank you so much varun for your time this was a very very insightful session bye bye bye